Hi there, my name is Dustin Beebe. Um, I've been here with Titan Machinery for about 15 years now. I'm a combine specialist here, and today we are going to go through a mid-range combine and talk about the fundamentals. So here we will visually inspect this concave here out of a 2388. Uh, we make multiple configurations of concaves. There's large wires, skip wires, small wires, um, for different crop conditions. So right now we're gonna look at the wear on this concave. As you can see here, these crossbars still got a pretty good edge on them. If they get too wore down, they'll start to get really rounded. Um, at that time, we wanna replace them. It's not as easy for the rotor to re -thre or thresh everything with, with rounded edges. We want more of a square edge to kind of be abrasive on it. Um, so next we will go through on how to install this and zero set the concaves, set the pinch point, and level the concaves as well. So once you have visually inspect your concaves um, and they all look good and they are installed properly, um, next thing to do is to level out the concave hanger. So we will make sure that we have the exact same measurement in the front here, from the bottom of the cage to the top of your concave hanger to the back here as well, to the back of the cage here, to the top of the concave. Make sure that those two points are level. That makes our concaves level there. Then we will go into setting the pinch point. So we're gonna count down nine slats here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So right here on the ninth slat there is where we want our rasp bars contacting our concaves. If they are not contacting there, we will have to go over to the opposite side of the combine and adjust either way that we need to to get that pinch point right on that ninth slat. After we get that set, we want to raise this thing all the way up till the rotor starts to hit the concaves. Once it does that, we want to back it off just a tish and adjust our stop bolts. That zero sets our concaves so that we know when we go up all the way to zero, these bolts are going to contact our concave plate and we won't have any contact with our, with our rotor. One thing we like to do is visually inspect our rasp bars to make sure that they are not wore out, cracked, uh, broken, or missing. Um, so what we can do here is put the rotor in neutral, spin it around here and visually inspect if you had all your concaves out spin it around so that you can see if there's any broke or missing rasp bars on your rotor. Um, one way to tell too would be if, if you were to spin your rotor and it wanted to just keep going that means we got a heavy spot on that. So that means we have an issue somewhere on our rotor either a broken rasp bar or a missing one. So one way to tell if they're wore out is these bolts here if these bolts are starting to get really, really thin, it's time to replace that rasp bar. For one, it's hard to get the bolt out, and for two, that rasp bar is so wore down, we've lost a lot of our ramp for threshing. Um, there is different configurations of rasp bars that we can put on these rotors. These, this one here is just a regular rasp bar, chrome rasp bar, which is a longer life than a standard rasp bar. We have spiked rasp bars and straight rasp bars. Once you've looked at all your rasp bars and everything looks good there, depending on crop condition and crop type, it might have to, you might have to adjust the veins in your rotor cage. Most of the time the front veins we don't mess with a lot. Um, we would mess more with the rear veins in the back of the rotor cage here. So where we would do that would be, say for instance, high moisture corn and high yield, um, having an issue threshing it out. Um, the more straight bars we have on that is going to help us, but we can also loosen these bolts here and slow our veins or slow our transport of the crop mat by moving this vein to the back, which is going to straighten it out more. It's going to slow that crop rotation down, give it more time to thresh. Um, or if you're in, say for instance, small grain and you want to save all your straw for baling, stuff like that, we want to advance our veins as far as we can go. So we're going to loosen these up and slide them to the, to the front as far as we can, which is going to tip our vein back and get, get that crop mat out faster so that we don't uh, beat too much on the crop itself. 
thresh too hard on it. So we'll touch base here on our shaker system real quick. Um, just to make sure there are the little things that, that a guy should be looking at and checking before you go out and uh, start harvest. Um, first off here, we'll start off with the big pitman arms. Make sure that the bearings sound good, aren't really rough. Make sure that there isn't any play in them that you can't lift up on it at all. Uh, the bushing in the front of the pitman arm, make sure that that is in good shape, that the bushing isn't all split out and pushing out. Uh, the same with the chafer pivot arm. Make sure that there's not a lot of play in here. You might have to stick a pry bar in the bottom, lift up on that a little bit just to make sure that there isn't any play in here. And the same with all the shaker bushings here on the side. Make sure that these all look good. Every single bushing, that they're not all blown out or any of them broke out or actually gone. That would be the biggest thing to look at here for your shaker system to make sure that they are. And if they are, we do sell a kit that has all the bushings in it so you don't have to try to piece through everything to find which ones you need. So here we're going to touch base on the tailings elevator. Uh, make sure that our clean or tailings elevator chain is um, tightened up to spec, that our drive chain is tightened up to spec as well, and that we don't have any jack shaft bearings or the little return auger bearings bad at all. Um, and then I will also show you how we can adjust the tailings elevator chain up properly to keep that within spec. So we'll start back here. What we normally like to keep is you want to be able to wiggle the chain just a little bit side to side, but not too much up and down. So here we can see this chain is physically too loose. You can hear it's too loose and you can see that it's walking around in that sprocket pretty, pretty bad. That'll get to vibrating through the elevator tube once it starts running. So in order to do that, to adjust this up properly, we need to do a couple steps here. We need to loosen our big bolt here for our chain tent, our drive chain. Once that is loose and our chain is loose, or we can remove it, we need to loosen up this bolt here. And then on top of the elevator here, we need to loosen this nut here, lift this bracket up, turn it out of the way so that we can get to our adjustment bolts. Once we get to our adjustment bolts, we want to make sure that we turn them evenly because that is going to pull up our upper elevator jack shaft evenly to tighten up our chain properly. Once we have done so many turns to get the spec that we want, we want to make sure that the gap in between here is the exact same on both sides. That way we know our elevator shaft is perfectly level inside. At that point, once that's all done, we will put this bracket back on over our adjustment bolts Tighten the nut down, tighten our cross bolt back up, install our drive chain, and tighten this up until we have hardly any play in this chain here. 